So far, I have gotten nothing, absolutely nothing. <laughs> but we have developed a friendship. I can see that. And I think long term, we're going to have a very, very great relationship. And I look very much forward to it. I was sitting at the table. We had finished dinner. We're now having dessert. And we had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen. And President Xi was enjoying it. The feeling we have for China is a very warm feeling. And I really believe it's only going to get warmer. I, think. I don't blame China. Who can blame a country for being able to take advantage of another country for the benefit of its citizens? I give China great credit. Blame China. Don't blame the administration. Don't blame Japan. Don't blame Europe. Blame China. China has been taking advantage of the United States for a long time. And we are always open to talking. But we have to do something. We have a tremendous trade imbalance with China, tremendous trade deficit. There can be no doubt. China is meddling in America's democracy. The United States, though, will not change course until China changes its ways. Because we've been down so low in trade, and other presidents should have done this a long time ago. We can't just make a good deal. And I told that to President Xi. But we had a deal that was very close, and then they broke it. Whether this whole agreement works is going to be determined by who's making the decisions in China, not in the United States. If the hardliners are making the decisions, we're going to get one outcome. If the, if the reformers are making the decisions, which is what we hope, mm -hmm. then we're going to get another outcome. But I'm a little upset with China, I'll be honest with you, because as much as I, I like President Xi and as much as I respect the country, and they should have told us about this. And I did ask him whether or not we could send some people in. They didn't want that. Out of pride, I think really out of pride. The greatest long-term threat to our nation's information and intellectual property and to our economic vitality is the counterintelligence and economic espionage threat from China. In fact, PRC-linked hackers have targeted American universities and firms in a bid to steal the IP related to coronavirus treatments and vaccines, sometimes disrupting the work of our researchers. Having been caught covering up the coronavirus outbreak, Beijing is de desperate for a public relations coup and may hope that it will be able to claim credit for any medical breakthroughs. I am concerned that while the United States and our partners focus on supporting one another in these challenging times, the Chinese Communist Party continues to engage in systematic rule breaking, coercion, and other malign activities. And most concerning to me, the People's Liberation Army continues its aggressive behavior in the East and South China Seas. President Nixon once said he feared he had created a Frankenstein by opening the world to the CCP. And here we are. We, the freedom-loving nations of the world, must induce China to change, just as President Nixon wanted. We must induce China to change in more creative and assertive ways, because Beijing's actions threaten our people and our prosperity. Securing our freedoms from the Chinese Communist Party is the mission of our time. And America is perfectly positioned to lead it, because our founding principles give us that opportunity.